students welcome welcome to the official site the youtube site of the cb classes and we are going to start this net batches and everything mainly for your advancement and everything so i am the academic director of the net ug i am dr gautam chattopadhyay i am phd and the postdoctoral in biotechnology and i am going to discuss something about your zoology classes right so first of all we are going to discuss the animal kingdom this part is very important because you know the most of the class 11 part and 30% of the class 12 is entirely depending on animals but unfortunately i'm telling you unfortunately most of the students they don't give much emphasis to this particular chapter again i'm telling you this first chapter is very very important because the entire syllabus of the zoology entire class 11 syllabus and more than 30% of the class 12 syllabus is based on animals so the basic idea is the animal kingdom so first we are going to start with the animal kingdom we are going to give you some information regarding the animal kingdom specifically which are important for the neat examination we are entirely going to follow the neat syllabus according to the cbsc pattern ncert pattern because all the questions will be coming from ncert if the diagram is questions are coming that will also come from the ncert and all the points will be coming from ncert but again i'm telling you you know the mcq pattern everything is there out of the four options one will come from the ncert and the remaining three will come from outside so it is not ncert but along with ncert some other information or knowledge is very important and we are going to discuss it because that is the main secret you know everyone is following ncert but that is a 25% of the all options the remaining 75% of the options three of the four options that is going to come from outside so that part is very vital and we are going to discuss that specifically that parts that will improve your quality right so we are going to start with the first chapter that is the animal kingdom this is the first chapter but we are going to follow the ncert syllabus cbsc ncert syllabus so we are all animals right we human we are also animals but we don't admit ourselves to be the animal but we are the animals so the animals are starting from the phylum polyphyla you must remember one point protozoa is there protus means old zoon means animal but the protozoans they are never regarded in animal kingdom why what are the vital properties of all animals you must remember the vital properties of all animals multicellularity and heterotrophic mode of nutrition so multicellularity is a very basic criteria of all animals but when we are seeing the protozoa old animals not only they are unicellular but the proper eukaryotic cellular organelles nucleus and other properly developed organelles are absent in protozoa that is why protozoa is now not regarded as the animal they are not included in the animal kingdom they are included in the kingdom protista unicellular plants and animals so first of all protozoa is protoplasmic grid unicellular all eukaryotic organelles are not present there so protozoa is not included in animal kingdom it is included in kingdom protista but we are going to discuss the animals so when we are going to discuss the animals you must remember the part evolution life originated in the sea you studied in the class 12 evolution part so first life came in the water in the sea water came the polyphyrans which are the polyphyrans they are the sponges first phylum of our syllabus we are mentioning about the syllabus we are not talking outside there are many many things many animals are there but our focus will be on the syllabus right so we won't deviate from the syllabus so in our syllabus the first phylum invertebrate phylum mentioned is polyphyla which are the polyphyrans they are the sponges what are the basic characters of the sponges 
mostly they are marine life originated in the sea water so the first evolved animals remember the part evolution coming evolution again i am telling you in the neat examination specific chapter wise questions are coming but some questions will be there which are intermingled from different chapters suppose when you are studying the animal kingdom you will find the gradations are there lower to higher grades that is also following in the evolution the hierarchy is following so the first phylum is porifera of a syllabus sponges aquatic aquatic means which live in the waters they are benthic so these are the points now aquatic they are living in the water they are benthic benthic means they are present on the substratum they are sedentary they cannot move they are sessile sessile s e s s i l e sessile means they are attached with the substratum came the polyphenols now the polyphenols they are only the cellular grid so protozoa is protoplasmic grid evolution polyphenol polyphenol the cellular grid that means different types of the cells of different nature different function they are forming the body of polyphenol or the sponge but there is no tissue no organ the only animals where the nervous system is absent no nervous tissue is there that is the polyphenol that is the sponge no neuron no nervous tissue because some of the cells they are forming the body so it is said if a sponge body is taken it is crushed in the cells from those cells a new sponge body can be formed because if you remember in a sponge a special type of cell is there that is called the archaeocyte cell which is a totipotent cell right so we will come to the point so that is the polyphenol so polyphenol are the sponges first evolved animals in the sea multicellular animals in the sea now evolution is going on from protozoa came the polyphenols from the polyphenols evolved the nidarians which are the nidarians some of them remain free floating in the water jellyfish some of them can swim hydra or some of them they are benthic and the sessile they are the corals so polyphenol only benthic only sessile evolution nidaria now they can swim they can remain afloat in water or they can remain on the substratum that is the evolution what is the other type of the evolution now they are diploblastic animals why the term is important diploblastic means if you remember the two embryonic germ layers they are the embryonic na no? the two embryonic germ layers they are forming the tissues of the bodies which are those germ layers which came first ectoderm and endoderm so the two embryonic germ layers ectoderm and endoderm they are forming the body of the animals so nidarians are tissue grid in polyphenol no tissue is there now the group of cells performing a specific function forming the tissue that evolved in the nidaria from nidaria little bit of advancement another phylum our next phylum is tinophora only a few animals are found this tinophora they are entirely marine all animals are present in the sea water but most of them they are pelagic pelagic means which remains in the water body and what is the advancement of the evolution in the tinophora they develop the ciliary plates what are the ciliary plates like combs almost eight in structure the cilia containing plates are there it is a movement of the beating of the cilia they can swim in the water so you try to understand the evolution the pathway of evolution polyphenol attached with the substratum nidaria some of them can swim some of them remain afloat some of them attached with the substratum evolution tinophora now they are free swimming 
Why they are free swimming? Because they develop the ciliary plates, eight rows of ciliary plates, which are also called the complex. Evolution is going on. Now, <clears throat> now evolved the triploblastic condition. Meaning of the word triploblastic, three embryonic germ layers, they are forming the body. So what are those three germ layers? First evolved ectoderm and endoderm. Ecto is outer, endo is inner. Now develop the middle germ layer, that is the mesoderm. So now the triploblastic animals evolved, platyhelminthes. So they are the triploblastic animals and since ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, the three germ layers, they are forming the bodies. So evolved the organs. So now they are tissue organ grade. So porifera, cellular grade. Nidaria, tissue organ grade. Now coming the platyhelminthes, menthes, they are the, uh, sorry, the platyhelminthes, menthes, they are the tissue organ grade. So again repeating, porifera or the sponges, cellular grade. Nidaria and tinophora, tissue grade, no organ. Now coming the triploblastic condition, platyhelminthes, menthes, tissue organ grade. That means some of the tissues, they are having a common function to form the organs. We also have multiple organs in our body. So the tissues are forming the organs, tissue organ grade. Next evolution is Ascalmenthes. What is the basic evolution here? Now they are developing a body cavity, a definite body cavity, which is mesoderm is there. In platyhel menthes, there is no body cavity. Body cavity is very important. All animals must have the body cavity where internal organs must be there, all higher animals. But in platyhel menthes, which is an example of endoparasite, endoparasite means endo is inner, which lives inside the host body. They are the worms, flat worms. They are the flukes, they are the parasitic, but they don't have any body cavity. But in the next phylum, Ascalmenthes, they are also endoparasite, they are also worms. What type of worms? They are the round worms. Example, Ascaris. In those animals, a new system evolved, tube within tube. We also have the same configuration. That means starting from Ascalmenthes up to the chordata, all phylum, they have the tube within tube configuration. What is the tube within tube configuration? The outer tube is the body wall and the inner tube is the digestive tube. So that is the tube within tube. In between the two tubes present the body cavity and inside the body cavity present all organs. Now from Ascalmenthes coming the next major phylum that is the annelida. What is the main criteria of the annelida? These animals develop coelom, true coelom, which is a mesoderm lined body cavity, earthworm. You have earthworm in your syllabus, very important animal in the animal morphology part, the earthworm will be there. So in the earthworm develop the coelom, mesoderm lined body cavity, then evolve the metameric segmentation or the segments of the body, which is specific for organs. They develop specific respiratory structure, skin. They develop specific excretory organs, nephridia. So starting the organ system grid, they develop the system. So first cell, tissue, tissue organ, now organ system. We also have the organ systems digestive system, respiratory system, excretory system, reproductive system. So organ system grades now started in the next phylum arthropoda which is the largest phylum having maximum number of the animals. This organ system is highly developed. These animals, the arthropoda, 
the meaning of the word arthropoda arthros means joint and poda means the appendage if you see the cockroach cockroach is also there in the syllabus so they have the jointed appendages in the body right they have a covering chitinous covering what is the evolution now they're exposed outside so the chitinous covering is there so in the arthropoda the chitinous covering is there they have the segmentation of the body and they evolved all organ systems in their body diverse animals insects can fly prawns and crabs they live in the water you have seen the spiders in the rooms you have seen lemurians the horseshoe crab the living fossil you studied in evolution part where there is no evolutionary development everything is here in the arthropoda so it's a huge phylum if you see the insecta it is a flying invertebrate is the insecta diverse from arthropoda our next phylum is the mollusca but what is the unique thing if you study in the evolution part mollusca is coming but the mollusca and the arthropods both of them evolve from the annelida a diverse evolution is there again repeating a diversification is there so now developing the arthropoda developing the mollusca from the previous phylum annelida in mollusca what is the advancement now they are exposed to the harsh environment so the body is covered by a calcium carbonate covering the shell this calcium carbonate covering is protecting the animal not only from other predators but from the hostile environmental conditions then body is soft you all have seen the gastropoda the snails you have seen the oysters their body is soft but that is enclosed within the shell but again in this mollusca a unique group is there that is called the cephalopoda octopus squid why cephalopoda because they evolved tentacles from the head cephalo means literally is the head poda means the leg locomotor organ so from the head region they develop the leg like structure by means of which they can swim and what is the uniqueness they develop the chambered heart octopus they develop the eye but the eye is without retina so that is evolution you will study in the evolution part the analogous organs so this analogous organs are there that is for vision we also have eye octopus they also possess eye but they don't have any retina right that is advancement now from the mollusca coming the most advanced invertebrate that is the echinodermata most advanced invertebrate but what is the uniqueness all echinoderms are the marine they live in the sea water marine means the animals which live in the sea water they are not pelagic pelagic means which remain in the water body they are benthic animals which live on the substrate so they are present much below the sea water 1 km 2 km below the sea water on the substrate substrate means the soil base these animals are present so what is the uniqueness they are carrying the water column above them 1 km or 2 km due to which excessive pressure some of the system degenerated so that is again the evolution a type of retrogressive evolution is going on that is due to again adaptation due to high pressure on the compression some of the systems now they disappeared which system respiratory system they don't have any respiratory organs like gill like lungs they don't have any circulatory system they don't have any excretory system because for those systems a hollow organ or hollow tubes are required this high pressure water column above them cannot allow them to develop those organs so what is happening now retrogression or the backwardness of some of the characters but uniqueness is there this highest group of the invertebrate they have some similarity with the chordates the next important phylum
right? They have the mesodermal place are there. Uh, they have the deuterostomic condition. We will discuss the deuterostoma means where the anus is developing first. That is also present in us in the embryonic state. So they have these conditions. So now the invertebrates are over. What are the basic characters of the invertebrates? Their body is soft, internal body, and there is no internal supporting system or skeletal system. So there is no internal skeletal system, but in the next phylum, in the next group, that is the hemichordata, we are having a structure which is giving the internal support. So the next phylum is hemichordata. Hemi means half, half chordata, they are not full chordata. But why they are slightly advanced over the invertebrates? Because they developed an internal supporting system that is called stomachord. If something rod-like structure is there or buccal diverticula, which is giving support to the soft body of these animals, which also live in the water, they are also benthic. So this stomachord is there. Now in the next major phylum in the chordata, we are having the most important internal supporting system, notochord. Just remember, notochord is present in all chordata, the animals having the notochord in any stage of the life cycle, that is called the chordata. This notochord is mesodermal origin. It is giving internal support. In some animals, it is present throughout the life. And in some other animals like us, vertebrata, this notochord is modified to form vertebral column, inside which we have the spinal cord. So now coming the chordates. But again in the chordates, some of the chordates, they are the primitive chordates or the protochordates. Which are those chordates? Eurochordates and the cephalochordates, where the notochord is there, but not present throughout the length of the body. They may be restricted in the tail part, that is the urochordata. They may be most developed in the anterior part, cephala, cephalochordata, but present throughout the length of the body. Now from the protochordata, evolved the vertebrata. So which of the vertebrata? Animals having the vertebral column. We have the vertebral column, so we also have the vertebrata. Which structure formed vertebral column? It is again the notochord. So in the embryonic stage, you also have reproductive system in your syllabus. You also studied the embryology. So in the embryonic stage, we had notochord. But in course of embryonic development, that structure is modified to form vertebral column. So we are vertebrata. So in our syllabus, we have the two groups of the vertebrates, agnatha and nathostomata. Natha means jaws. Animals without jaws are the agnatha, cyclostomes. They have the sectorial round mouth. But nathostomata are the animals where the paired jaws are there. Which are the animals? You know, starting from the fish. All fishes have the paired jaws. Then from the fish evolved the amphibian. Again, you see the evolution is going on. First evolved vertebrates are entirely aquatic, means present in the water. Which animals? Class spices, fishes. Now evolution is going on because now there is competition in the water. There is a shortage. There is a competition for space, competition for food. So some of the fishes, now they started invading land evolve the next class amphibia. Amphibians means both. So those animals can live both in the water and the land, amphibians. Best example, frog, toad, salamander. In our niche syllabus, we have the frog in the animal morphology part. So we have to study it extensively. Now the evolution is going on. In those amphibians, now there is no body covering. The body skin is exposed. They have the naked skin. And it is through the skin, they can continue the respiration, exchange of gas. But from amphibians evolved the true terrestrial animals, reptiles. So came the reptiles from the amphibians. When they're exposed to the sunlight, 
Now the body becomes covered by epidermal scales, shells, plastrons. Example, tortoise, snake, dinosaurs, which are now extinct, they are the reptiles. Now reptiles invaded land. They were exposed to harsh conditions, survival. You know dinosaurs, they ruled the earth for millions of years, but became extinct. Now from reptiles evolved the two important classes, one branch from the Pisces, aerial, which could fly in the sky, and the other branch from the mammal, class mammalia. We belong to mammalia. Like annelidans give rise to arthropoda and the mollusca, this group, the reptiles, they also diversified to form two classes, apes, apes means birds and the mammals. And we human beings, we are present at the topmost level of the mammalia, Homo sapiens sapiens, which you will study in the human evolution part. So one thing you see, everything is interrelated. And if your concept regarding the animal kingdom is very clear, initially, all the systems and all these things, then when we are going to study the next chapters, mainly the physiological chapters, physiology, then everything will be clear. Right? So it is a brief introduction uh, I'm giving you for your tuning, for your betterment, for your neat examination, for your training. So again, I'm introducing myself. I'm the academic director of NET UG of the CV classes. Again, just giving the introduction. And I'm Dr. Gautam Chattopadhyay, the academic director. And obviously, I'm a doctorate and postdoctorate in biotechnology. That will also help you because you also have biotechnology in your syllabus. And I have the first year experience in biotechnology. Right? So now, we are going to discuss some of the points regarding the phylum. It is a brief introduction regarding the animal kingdom. And again, I am repeating why this chapter is very important. Because the entire syllabus of class 11 and near about 40% syllabus of class 12 is directly related with the animals. Even the domestication of animals, that part also. Except the biotechnology, evolution. All chapters are related directly with the animals. So you have to give special emphasis on this kingdom, animal kingdom, for your NEAT examination. And in the NEAT examination, one or two questions come directly from the animal kingdom part. But one thing I'm telling you, there may be many, many informations in the textbook. Mainly the ISC board and the West Bengal, the HS board, they have the textbook, the huge volume, many informations are there, but those are irrelevant for the NEAT examination. Because the NEAT examination is strictly following the CBSC guideline, that is strictly following the NCRT. So for this Animal Kingdom chapter, we will study the main points based on NCRT and other points and the examples only from the NCRT. What is mentioned in the NEAT syllabus, invertebrate, phylum character and examples. Examples obviously from the NCRT. And the vertebrates class character. Which are the classes? Pisces, amphibians, reptiles, birds and the mammals. Those class characters and the examples entirely based on NCRT. So we are going to follow the CBSC neat pattern of NCRT. But that is not sufficient Again, I am repeating, because one foot will be coming from the NCRT, the remaining three foot will be coming from outside. So if you don't have concept regarding the remaining 75%, it will be very difficult to choose or mark the correct option, because almost all options, four options are almost identical. That is the main trick of the NEET examination. You see the questions, they are not very tough. Everything is there on the NCRT. It is based on the NCRT. But the questions are tricky because of the three-fourth part. They are almost alike. But when you are going to pick them up, then it becomes very difficult. And if you pick it wrong, then you know what is happening. You are not answering any question. That is minus four is from the total mark. But if you are wrong, then what is your punishment? Minus one. So what is deduced from the total number? 
minus 5 negative marking that is the terrible thing the negative marking and why the negative marking is there because those 75 percent concept is not clear so when you see in the question paper the four options you simply fail to mark the proper answer so our study for neat examination will be based on NCRT. It will be based. NCRT is the base book. But along with the NCRT, some of the informations will come. Why? Again repeating, MCQ, the four options will be there. One will be coming from NCRT directly or indirectly in the negative way. And the three will be coming from outside. For which the concept have to be very clear. Right? So first we are going to start the first chapter of our zoology that is the animal kingdom. Simple thing, simple points, just try to understand. So when we are going to start the animal kingdom, So first remember two points are very important that is multicellularity and heterotropic mode of nutrition. These are the two basic criteria of all animals. That is why protozoa is not animal, it is protoplasmic grid, not cellular grid. So just to mention it, protozoa is protoplasmic grid. That is why protozoa is not in animal kingdom. It belongs to another group that is protista. Unicellular plants and animals, protoplasmic grid, protista. So, according to NCRT, we have the invertebrate phylum, we have the vertebrate classes. So, what are the invertebrate classes? And the phylum. So when we are seeing the phylum, we are marking it with 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Because every time while we are mentioning the characters, the whole phylum character, the name, writing will be very boring. So I am just giving the numbering 1, 2, 3, 4. So when we are going to discuss any character, those letters will suffice. And it will be easier for you to remember those characters. So, phylum Polyphera Nidaria Tinophora Platyhel Memphis, Askel Memphis,
panel leader arthropoda mollusca echinodermata this is the major invertebrate phylum so when we are numbering them porifera nidaria tinofora platyhelminthus ascalminthus annelida arthropoda mollusca and echinodermata these are the invertebrate phylum now next we are finding the hemichordata and next we are coming to the major phylum that is the chordata right so you see according to the ncert syllabus we have 11 major phyla going to discuss but 1 to 10 only the phylum character and example examples only from ncert and phylum chordata the classes the five classes only the from ncert and again the example from ncert so invertebrate phylum character and example and chordata vertebrate class character and example examples only from ncert we are going to discuss this thing so why the lettering is there while i am mentioning 1 2 3 4 everything everything so you will remember we are talking about those phyla suppose when i am discussing some character of five number five So number five is the ascalminthus, number six is the annelida, number seven is the arthropoda, number eight is the mollusca. So it will be very easier to remember because every time you are uttering or when you are studying those phylum characters, same character repeating, 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 then it becomes very monotonous. Our brains fail to recognize those things. We don't like anything monotonous. We have to be interesting. for remembrance so in this way we are going to present all the phylum now coming to the next point some important animal characters we are considering organization polyphera which are the sponges i am again mentioning you know uh, we have give the letters for the different phylum we are not writing those big big phylum name repetition will be there it can be boring so i am just mentioning the letters you take the letters and then you follow it it will be easier so number one is the polyphera polyphera is the sponge polyphera is the cellular grid what is cellular grid no tissue or organ
No tissue is there. No organ, no nervous tissue, sponge. Best example, sponge. Coming nidaria, coming tidophora. These animals are diploblastic. What is diploblastic? That is two embryonic germ layers. You must remember, no? they are the embryonic germ layers. Ectoderm and endoderm, they form the body. Dye means two. Blastic means which are going to divide. You also studied in the embryology plot, blastulation, gastrulation, those things are there. You also studied in the embryology, the three germ layers in our body also, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, the, how they form different tissues and the organs. So these animals are the diploblastic, embryonic germ layers, ectoderm and endoderm, they are forming the body. And what is the main point? They are the tissue grid. So from cellular grade came the tissue grade. Now the next phylum is platyal menthes. This platyal menthes is triploblastic. So diploblastic means two germ layers. And what is triploblastic? The three germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and in between them, the mesoderm layer is forming. So, triploblastic is ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. They are forming all the body. So, these animals are triploblastic. And what is the basic arrangement or the organization here? Now they are tissue organ grid. You see that is the evolution going on. Cellular grid came the tissue grid, came the tissue organ grid. Now, from Ascalmenthes up to Chordata, now you see the next coming is the Ascalmenthes and then coming all other phylums, then coming the Protochordata and the Chordata. All these animals, now they are triploblastic. And what is the advancement now? They have the organ system grid. They are forming all the organs. So, there is the organization of animals. Symmetry in the body. What is the symmetry? That is the equality. Similarity. That is the symmetry. You all know we have the bilateral symmetry. 
that will means sides both the sides that means if a line is passing to the mid axis of the body the left side and the right side externally the similarity will be there that is bilateral symmetry what may be the other type of the symmetry round body is there you are cutting the transverse section passing a line through it two sides will be equal that is a radial symmetry so what is radial symmetry round animal body in the transverse section when it is cut like a cucumber you are cutting a cucumber you will finding a round surface you are passing a midline through it a line through it passing to the midpoint then two sides will be equal so the round body that can be cut in two equal halves at any plane is the radial symmetry in some animals there may be no symmetry asymmetry you know some of the polyphenols they don't have any symmetry you see the snail taking out from the shell coiled body is there no symmetry is there so it can be asymmetry that is no symmetry in the body it can be the radial symmetry where the animal is having the round body or it can be the bilateral symmetry the two lateral sides of the halves they have the similarity so when we see the animals you see first we are seeing the polyphenol some of the polyphenols they don't have any symmetry asymmetry but again radial symmetry in some some exceptions are always there exceptions are the rule of nature you will find exceptions are always there because what are the exceptions they are the evolutionary characters they are intermediate characters so they are exceptions nidaria and tinophora they have radial symmetry so what is radial symmetry the round body we are cutting the transverse section mid line is passing two sides will be equal but the body has to be round that is the radial symmetry starting from platyelminthes to chordata bilateral symmetry what are the criteria of bilateral symmetry the body is not round the body is dorso ventrally flattened this is the dorsal part this is the ventral part the body is flattened and if a line is passing through it midline then the two lateral halves will be equal so starting from tatial mentis to the next major phyla mostly the bilateral symmetry is there but again some exceptions are there in mollusca asymmetry where snail oyster in echinoderm so these are the exceptions in echinoderm pentaradial symmetry 
Penta means five. The body is round, but the five arms are going out. You all have seen starfish, either in the TV channel, National Geographic or the Discovery Channel, or if you visit it any seashore or everything, you can see the starfish. So in the starfish, the pentaradial symmetry is there. What is the pentaradial symmetry? The five arms, they are radiating out from the round body. That is the pentaradial symmetry. So animals may have no symmetry. The animals may have the bilateral symmetry. They have the radial symmetry. Or in some animals, the pentaradial symmetry can be there. So symmetry is an important criteria. So next you see the body cavity. Why body cavity is important? Because inside the body cavity, all internal organs are present. So the cavity is very important. Porifera sponge. If you remember, what is the structure of the sponge body? It is a porous body. Sponge have the porous body, the multiple pores are there, inside which present spongocell. What is spongosyl? Water is coming here, water is circulating, then the water is going out through the osculum. So the body cavity of the sponge body, that is porifera, is a spongosyl. In Didaria, in Tinophora, a special term is used that is called gastrovascular cavity. So what is gastrovascular cavity? If you see any body of any hydra, the tentacles are there. Water is coming in, water is going out. Like vessel, blood vessel, so that is vascular. And why it is gastro? Because when the water is coming inside, that is also bringing the food materials. So the initial digestion is occurring inside the body cavity where the circulation is going on. So it is gastrovascular cavity. So if you find this term in the examination, the gastrovascular cavity, you can point. It is either Nidaria or the Tinophora. So initial digestion of food, gastro, circulation of water, vascular cavity. But in the next phylum, in Platyal Menthes, there is no body cavity. Flat form, they don't have any body cavity. So, these animals are triploblastic. And Acelomata. You see, now we are having a term that is called the silom. The animal without any silom, silomata. So, what is the definition of silom? Is a very important term because we are also silomata. 
What is psyllium? It is a mesoderm lined body cavity that is called psyllium. So now we are coming to a very vital point that is the psyllium. So the definition of psyllium Mesoderm line body cavity. What is the concept? body wall is ectodermal. GI tube is endodermal. So the space between them, that is called the body cavity. So what is body cavity? It is a present, the space present between the outer body wall and the digestive tube. That is the body cavity. And when this body cavity is lined entirely by mesoderm, very important germ layer, then that body cavity is called psyllium. So again repeating what is the definition of psyllium? It is a mesoderm line body cavity. Now we are seeing what is happening in the next spine. Body cavity digestive tube the space between them is the body cavity. So now the next condition is there. Pseudocelum and true silum, false silum and true silum. Again, the silum can be of two types: cesocelum and enterocelum. So what is the funda here? In all the three cases, the body wall is there. This is again according to NCRT. Body wall is there. Digestive tube in all. But what is happening in the pseudocelum or in the false psyllium? So here the mesoderm is not lining the whole body cavity. Again repeating, why it is the false psyllium? Because you see the entire body cavity is not lined by mesoderm. It is enclosing some isolated pockets in between which the organs are present. So that is the pseudocelum 
false serum because again repeating not the entire body cavity is lined by mesoderm. Some isolated pockets they are covered by mesoderm in between which the organs are present. So this false serum is present in which phylum? Ascalmentus. Now coming the true serum, sisocilum. So in the sisocilum, the mesoderm is entirely lining the body cavity. So the white one is the mesoderm, it is entirely lining the body cavity, there is a sisocilum, it is a true silum. So in this mesoderm lined body cavity present all the organs. So which of the phylum? Ascalmentis. Now we have Annelida, Arthropoda and Mollusca. True serum, but that is sisocilum. Then what is enterocilum? Here also mesoderm is there, but now it is forming a very specific function. They are attached with each other and now they are forming some pockets in between them. And in between these pockets present the specific organs. Here all the organs are there. So here organs are present, so that is why it is a problematic because what is happening here when the animal is moving, the movement is affected, the organs remain come in contact with each other. But what is happening in enterocilum, since the vital organs they are present inside the specific chambers, they are not coming in contact with each other. So the movement, locomotion and other functioning, they are becoming easier. So, which animals are the enterocilomata? Now we are having sorry. Mollusca. Uh, so it is the Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca. Now it is Echinodermata. Hemicordata and chordata. So, false silum ascalmentis, true silum starting from annelida, that is a statement. True silum first evolved in annelida, arthropoda, mollusca, and the ultimate silum, the enterocilum, echinodermata, hemicordata, and the chordata. So, the question which came in the NCRT, the animals where silom evolved first, the first true silomate animals, the options were Ascalmentis, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca. So here the answer will be Annelida. So Annelidans are the first true silomata, then came in the other phylum. body configuration. Porifera, they are the sponges, vast like porous body. It is a flower burst like sponge. You will find in National Geography Discovery Channel, they are showing the marine thing, the marine life very frequently. You will find this sponge body is like a flower burst. They may have the branches, right? And the whole body is porous. And through the pores, water is coming inside with food material, respiratory gases, everything. And a single pore is there, upper part, through which water is going out.
So the body is vast like porous body. Nidaria tenophora. Blind sack like body. Why blind sack like body? Because one part is open and one part is closed. Water is coming inside, water is going out. This part is closed. So that is a blind sack like body. Plateal vent is flat body. So it is flat body, they are the flat worms, no cavity. But starting from the next phylum, Ascalvent is up to chordata, a configuration is there that is called tube within tube. This configuration or the body configuration is there. What is the tube within tube configuration? The outer tube is the body wall. And the inner tube is the digestive tube. So it is a tube within tube and when they are forming the digestive tube obviously one opening is there that is the mouth through which food enters and there is another opening that is the anus through which the undigested material is going out. So tube within tube configuration is starting from Ascalmenthes up to Chordata the tube within tube configuration is there. So, Two terms are there, protostomia and deuterostomia. Protostomia Mouth forming first, from embryonic blastopore. So here the mouth is forming first. And the deuterostomia just opposite, anus forming first. So, which animals are the protostomia? Ascalmenthes, Annelida, Arthropoda. Mollusca. Which animals are the deuterostomia? Echinodermata, hemichordata, and chordata. So that is the point. Some animals are protostomia where the mouth is forming first, 
Some animals are due to dystomia, anus is forming first. That is why echinoderms are the clues to chordates, highest group of the invertebrate. Now another important point is the internal skeletal system. Internal supporting system, so from Polyphera to Echinodermata, soft body, no internal support. So they are invertebrata. Hemicordata, now they developed stomachord. Stomachord is ectodermal. It is cellular. So it is present where? In the hemicordata. And in the next phylum, that is chordata, here we are having the most important criteria or the condition that is notochord. Notochord is mesodermal and it is solid rock like. So, in all chordates, the notochord is there, notochord is mesodermal, so the animals having notochord in any stage of life is chordata. Two points, notochord is present in all embryo. Second point, notochord persists in some adults. It's a very important point. In some adults, which animals? Agnatha, shark, cartilaginous species. And the third point, notochord modified to form vertebral column. So these animals are vertebrata. So three criteria, notochord present in all embryo, notochord present in some adult form and the notochord is modified to form vertebral column. Right? So you see, is the first class of animal kingdom, just the introductory, the basic concepts are there. Based on these concepts, you will find all systems are there. So that will be discussed in the next classes. I think, I hope you students, you all enjoyed this class because you know it's a very informative thing. You all enjoyed this thing, I believe, this class. You got informations based on the NCRT. You are liking it. And when you are liking it, obviously you will subscribe this particular channel. Okay? So please subscribe it, the CV classes.